you've got a chaffy night tank coming through behind. But certainly the Greyhound, the Jeep and the Dodge Weapons Carrier are going to be quite vulnerable to this situation. The MG42 breaking those vehicles to crew of the Jeep and the Dodge Detective. Let have their vehicles, they haven't managed to take their weapons with them, so all they can do is retreat. The Grenadiers have realised that their position is rather exposed. They are pulling back into the rear of the position. They are down into firing position again. They're certainly not running away, they're not giving up. taking cover off the 50,000 dogs. have been experimenting with all through the 1930s. The American military in the 1930s is uh, relatively small. MacArthur, the commander of the military, does not want to lose men. He would much rather pay for the defence budget for soldiers than buying large fleets of new equipment. So there's lots of experimentation in the 30s. Some other Shermans and the variations the US made in the war. I don't know if you can hear the different engine notes between those two vehicles. The front German tank has got the multi-bank engine um, put together by Chrysler. The rear M18 Hellcat has the R975, the radial, the aeroplane engine. Now coming up behind is the British tank, the Comet. Uh, the last tank there, it's the last of the cruiser tanks to come into service in World War II. It started off using components from the Cromwell tank but um, we're now using for British tanks, back to the engine story, the aeroplane engine, the famous one, the Merlin, that was in the Spitfire and in the Lancaster bomber, a guy called Rumpty Rowbottom uh, at a Belper Works, Rolls-Royce. He gets some crashed engines from aeroplanes, Merlin engines, and starts converting them with the idea of making a suitable tank engines. We had a problem in Britain of having powerful enough engines to move a tank around. Heavier the tank, more power it's going to need. And what he does, he comes up with the Meteor engine. It's about 600 horsepower, and that's a really good amount of power to take the tank around. We put it in the Cromwell, and we put it in this tank, the Comet. And the other interesting thing about this tank is that gun. Um, at last, we now have, we've had the 17-pounder put on a Sherman, 76 millimeter. The weight of shot was 17 pounds for the solid shot in the old way of weighing things. This is a gun that looks like a slightly shortened 17-pounder. It fires the same projectile as a 17-pounder, a different brass propellant case behind it though. 
So they call this the 77mm high velocity gun. The way of differentiating it. So there you've got, you can hear that lovely feature engine, plenty of power, a good gun, and relatively thick armour protection for a British tank at this stage of the war. Necessary to the same engine, so different factories produce different Germans with different engines. But as they come round, the first one you can see here is the M482. The engine you can hear. There we are, you've got twin Detroit diesels in the back there pushing around. <laughs> wow. You may recognise that one, of course, that's our famous film star tank, Fury. The next one coming out here is the M4A4. And he's got a siren, ladies and gentlemen. This was the most commonly used tank by the British as the famous or infamous wise up bolt back engine in there. We now have a couple of very important vehicles. What we've got seen in the museum before, the M50 and the M51. I'm going to say nothing about those because my colleague Stuart's going to talk about those in a moment or two. Thank you. 